And now we have a shelving story for you, ladies and gentlemen. So I was in Bali. I was in engine room, boogieing away, having a great time. I don't know if you've been to like uh, Alley Cats in Bali. Ever been there? Yep. With the double doubles? Yep. The tray of double doubles for 15 bucks. I drank two of those trays. I, my heart was going up like at least 180 beats per minute. Let's be honest. By the way, no shirt shoulder bag. These two girls started dancing on me. I was like, oh, stop it. She's like, come back to my villa. We get back to the villa, we're partying. Me and the two friends go into a room and then she's like, do you want to get high? She's like, I've got Xanax, pseudoephedrine. She just rattles off all of these prescription drugs that you can get in Bali very, very easily. And I was like, well, what are we snorting these? What's going on? No. Nope. She's like, have you ever shelved before? <laughs> and she's like, sucks her finger. And she had nails, bro. She oh had my nails. <laughs> We got Jacob Rhodes on the show. Welcome. It is the Sevo show. I was on his show first, so he has a flex. I've got him on because, you know, why not? Podcasters, helping podcasters, <laughs> collaboration over competition and just talk shit. Oh, yes. I don't even know which, mic, uh, which thing I'm looking at, but I'll just go to the main camera. Uh, Ryan's got the mic as well. So if you hear some other random voice, it's not out of sync. Ryan is talking and putting in input. I've already called Ryan Jamie, by the way, everyone. Good. Yeah. And uh, we've <laughs> also got a new feature. And uh, if we can bring it up, we've got uh, the screen. You can see that we've uh, started Googling random shit. Get the googs. What is moot? And what uh, is moot? Well, a bit of organization. <laughs> So that's fun. So we're yeah, we've really we've really upscaled it now. Uh, unfortunately, I have to look up this way, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's your good side. So it's Thursday, one thirty, on a February sixteenth afternoon. <laughs> yes. What do you feel? Um, actually, like I was kind of nervous. What? Yeah. I was what? Like, Ooh. Um, yeah, man. Lots been happening right now, I think, in um, the entertainment industry in Perth. Yep. Um, obviously, you've been around for it. I've been seeing Massive you. weekend, oh. just gone. Holy shit. Yeah, what happened? Posty, Red Hot Chili. Oh, yes, yes. A bunch of laneway peeps I've never heard before. Fred again. Yeah. That I only discovered like maybe two, three weeks ago. Kale would absolutely fucking hate that, but that's his demographic. Really? Um, he would hate that you only discovered it t three yes, weeks ago? absolutely. Wow. He, uh, he I haven't me, even heard of him before. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> He's shaking his head. <laughs> we, need, we need a chaos shake head fam, Cam. Yeah, but, just um, back of the head. But like, it's a thing, right? Like I saw something on TikTok about people discovering a, uh, like a secret gig that Fred was hosting in Melbourne and everyone mm. was like, it was a sick setup. And the music's cool. But like, it's again, we're, we're aging, right? We're into the rock bands. We're not really oh, into yeah. the technical shit. Mm -hmm. We like the hip hop, we like the R&B, we like the singing, but we don't like the super sampling over the top, you know? I mean, if you're like, ladies and gentlemen, don't do drugs, but if you're on a bit of LSD or, you know, yeah. having a good time, man, it gets a little bit crazy, that, yeah. all that sampling stuff. Yeah, allegedly it's a different experience. Yeah, I don't do drugs. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I went to Laneway because I was doing a collaboration with St. John WA. Now, when was Laneway? Same day. Okay, right. Mm, yeah, and the UFC was in the morning, but I didn't, I, I couldn't, I didn't get right. into that one, unfortunately. Um, I met Jack uh, straight after, though, uh, for lunch. That was really cool. Um, Della Maddalena. Yeah. Yeah. Cool dude. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, laneway straight after um, – no, I met Jack in the afternoon before the Chili Peppers, but I went to laneway, which is like right across the road from the brewery. Mm. And, um, yeah, I was there. I, I had a great time, mm -hmm. um, but it's not my, my scene. What wasn't? Laneway, it's not my scene. No. It's not my – Who was the um, main headline? I don't even fucking know. <laughs> Joji? Joji? <laughs> Never heard of it. No, 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 no. No. no, no, no idea. I actually got asked on Tuesday if I was going to Laneway, so that was. It's just, just fuck like around. if you're if you're a fan of Triple J, <laughs> okay, you're a fan fan of Laneway. I was a fan of Triple J in 2010, mm. and that was the last time I really paid attention to Hollis 100. Yeah, because now it's the alternative 100, <clears throat> um, which is like the point because they don't like mainstream or whatever. Even though one of the fucking top 10 songs was Jack Harlow's um, First Class. And I'm just like, hypocrites. <laughs> what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But that was in like the top 10 of like the main charts. Yeah. So I guess it, 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 uh, it 
you know, attracts the uh, alternate crowd to. Yeah, okay. Well, it's probably more of a, like, who do you know yeah, kind of uh, thing. Yes. Why do you think that um, certain songs get played on Triple J? Because right? I've had this conversation before. Man, I don't know. I, yep. think, I think it's because of money, um, who knows who, producers and cash and. Does it give you a, like a monopolized vibe for the it does music a industry? Bit. Yeah, yeah. Because I I remember I had a friend who lives in the states now. She's a singer, country singer. Her name's Danny Stefanetti. Shout out, Danny. She's great, and she's an amazing voice. She's an amazing songwriter. And I was like, why the fuck is this not on the radio? Mm. And then she goes, she she sent it to Triple J, Triple J unearthed, and all that shit. And they they came back to her and said, um, yeah, it's too poppy. <laughs> it's too mainstream. What the hell does that Fucking, mean? They play Jack Harlow. That's too mainstream. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't listen to Top 40. I don't listen to the radio at all. At all? No. At all. What's your favorite type of music? Fuck. Depends on the mood. Um, if I'm studying, it's lo-fi hip-hop. Ooh. Or if I'm like working, mm-hmm. lo-fi hip-hop, no lyrics. If I'm... Um, if I'm on the rare occasion, not doing anything. It's some sort of rap, mm-hmm. you know, like I've got the vinyl collection at home, Ooh. put some Kendrick on the vinyl. Yes, that always sir. That's what I'm talking about. And then um, the old school, you know, the Led Zeppelins, the Pink Floyds, the Jimi Hendrix, um, the Doors, um, all those classic 70s bands. Mm. And, and we'll go right through the 80s. Like that's when like Van Halen and shit were a thing. Um, but I'm not really as much of an 80s fan anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some bangers still, but I'd more 70s than 80s. I listened to 80s on the way here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I was listening to like uh, Break My Stride by Matthew Walker. Oh, dude, there's, <laughs> some, absolute, <laughs> there's some absolute bangers like uh, Dance Hall Days by Wei Chung. Oh, yeah. That's an absolute classic. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, there's a few others like uh, uh, Final Countdown by... Europe. Oh, yeah. You it's know? the final countdown. Yeah. It's too good. It's too yeah. good. But yeah, 90s music is where I live. Mm. 90s music is where it was at. It was my decade that I was born and I just loved it. And then uh, early 90s as well. And then 2000s I didn't like when I was in it. But then I um, I come to grow to love it. Like the Black Eyed Peas early days. Yeah. Love that shit. They, they were trash live though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, as everybody is. I, I didn't get a response from you when we were at um, uh, Exhibit and Chingy because we were getting smashed. Were you there? Are you what? joking? Were you, I didn't know you were there. Exhibit and Chingy. Oh, the after party. Oh, no, I thought, I thought you were talking after- about <laughs> Juicy. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You, you, you questioned me on that and I was like, nah. Um, but mm. how, were you fangirling hard over... Over like the exhibit? No, nah, not really. No? No. Nah. I, 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 re- I listened to a bit of Chingy back in the day. Mm. The Right There song and a couple of others, Holiday Inn. Um, but I actually, you know, I actually liked Sean, Sean Paul. Like Sean Paul <laughs> back in the day was fucking sick. Sean DePaula. <laughs> that, that was a sick song. And... Um, uh, uh, that song like glue. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, no, uh, I don't know what people say. I don't need to watch for do them. What do? do. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. gotta stick to my girl like glue. That one. That is. Um, that uh, the reason why I like that song was because of a video game. It was on. Uh, uh, like one of the car racing games. It wasn't Need for Speed. It was something else. Maybe that's something that uh, Ryan can pull up for the first time and go. What song was? Like glue, which was it <laughs> which on game? Hot Wheels? Um, was it Hot Wheels? I, I don't know. Video game. Let's see how good he is at this. It was a car NBA. racing game. I remember it was in the main menu. And uh, let's see what he, what, he, what he can come up with. Let's uh, have a look. We're, we're judging Paul. his um, research skills now. So Sean Paul like glue video game uh, appearance. I reckon that's what I would search up. He had so, a pretty prolific music career back then. Yeah. Like what, it was What was so the song called? Like Glue. Sean Paul video game. Uh, Sean Paul like Glue video <coughs> game appearance. What happened to Sean Paul? No idea, but he's coming again uh, to the, 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 more, the next one, the next festival. Juicy. 
No, the one that was with UB40 in it or something. Here we go. Boys. He's going uh, with UB40. Midnight, yeah, Midnight Club. That's it. Dub edition. That's oh. exactly the game. Yeah. Yeah, I played Midnight that Club. game so much. I remember that game. That yeah. was addictive as shit. There it is. Good, good times. That had free roam, right? That game, I think so. Yeah, yeah, you could yeah. like roam around, and get away from the cops. Yeah, yeah, but I, yeah. I got a lot of my music taste from um, San Andreas, mm. uh, Vice, Vice City. City yes. yeah. So, <laughs> so all the eighties musics I like. Literally, all of it's from Vice City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then anything like that kind of is not in that game. I'm like, nah, <laughs> it's not in Vice City. It's not cool. But that's how much influence video games has on the music culture as well. True. Like GTA Four. I didn't give a fuck about mm. as much. Surely Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Tony Hawk Pro Skater was elite. And yeah. Guitar Hero. And Guitar Hero, yeah. That kind of opened up the world of punk, I reckon. Yeah. You know, that Pro I remember, Skater. I remember Tony Hawk uh, 4 with uh, TNT as mm. the intro for ACDC. Yeah. I was like, whoa, it was fucking sick. It was wild. I, I clocked that game. It, I, I was determined when it came out to clock it. It took me ages. Yeah. Then one day I picked it up randomly again and I was bored. I clocked it in one day. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, just I still got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? What do they call that? Um, muscle memory. Muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just get it yeah. done. What do, you, what do you have in predictions for like the video game aspect of where the world's going? Because we have like VR coming up. Some kid just made $2.7 million or something at a like a, an arena in Phoenix, Arizona or some shit like that. That's dope. Like where do you see that going? Um, I mean, the main games, Rocket League, um, Fortnite, and Minecraft are still huge. Mm. Overwatch, um, Counter-Strike, Call of Duty Warzone, uh, League of Legends, and, and there's a few others um, that I can't really Valorant. remember. Hey? Valorant. Valorant. Never heard of that before. Never heard of it. But um, yeah, those games are like the top tier mm. competitive gaming. Um, so competitive gaming, everybody wants to be a competitive gamer. Casual gamers... Unless you have a personality, you don't really play for fun anymore. That's what I've noticed. Go into that. Like people don't play for fun anymore. They, they play with their mates to achieve something mm. and they, they want to start recording videos and things like that. And South Park took the piss out of this as well. A lot more kids nowadays actually just watch people play video games. True, yeah. And it's an interesting one because parents would be like, why the fuck would you watch someone play video games? Why can't you play it yourself? Mm. Because they're not as good, right? Mm. And then parents are like, that's stupid. But here's the kicker, pun intended. What do the parents watch? Someone play sport because they're not as good. It's the same shit. Damn, I haven't even thought about it like that before. Yeah, exactly. That would be the same as like cooking shows as well. Yeah, cooking shows, sport. That's what we're getting into at scale now with video games. We're going to be competitively watching. And we're going to be betting on people. And we're going to be watching that shit unfold. And with augmented reality as well, mm. like in real life, like Pokemon Go, something will come around again that will be like that. It won't be as nostalgic as Pokemon Go, but it'll be something that people can go outside for and hunt for shit. Um, there's an app uh, that tried it mm. uh, in WA actually, but I don't know where they are because I, I worked with them a little bit, but they I don't know, haven't heard from them since. But just the user interface wasn't quite right. Mm. And when it's not quite right, it's not right yeah, at all. Yeah. And it needs to be like just as compelling as a real life situation. Yeah. If it doesn't compel you more, like that's why Zombies on uh, Call of Duty did so oh. well because it's an out of world experience. Yeah. Now, if they could like level that up and make that into like a VR, virtual reality, like immersive yeah. kind of state, bro, there's no going to like, they won't be able to get the kids off the yeah. games anymore. There's an app called Zombie Run um, where... It gives you updates. You have to run this way, that way. I haven't actually tried it before, mm. but the concepts sound really cool. Like I would go running away from zombies and like the phone tells me like, every time the like, – imagine creating this app where the phone is vibrating because there's someone nearby. There's an element of like yeah, horror danger. there. Yeah. <laughs> you adapt that to your wrist because the, the watch vibrates. It's haptic. And you're just like if it's getting close, you're like which way do you run? Oh, shit. You know, that'd be fun. Or like get a little compass on your phone and go, all right, which ways to safety? You got a point. And if it's vibrating, you're like under pressure. And then all of a sudden you've run 10 kilometers without realizing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many people lost weight because of Pokemon Go? 
Really? So many people. Like I would, I would, went up to Kings Park. Did you ever play it in 2016, bro? No. It was I could, like I, could, I, I watched people play. Dude, it was crazy because like I never, I, I like Pokemon, but my parents never let me buy the cards because they were like it's just fucking cardboard. Mm. Showed them, and um, <laughs> but yeah, 2016, I was obsessed. But I was in the middle of uni and mm. I had nothing else better to do. Right. And looking back, it was an amazing like time. But the people that I hung out with, <laughs> and they were cool people, um, but the bottom line Were they was, really, though? They didn't have anything better to do. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but that goes back to my point of video games is you play video games to escape reality because mm-hmm. you don't have anything better to do. Yeah. Or you have something to do, but it's not that great because your job's shit or something. Mm-hmm. So you decide to escape through video games. Same with sport. People watch sport to escape. Um, you know, if they're passionate about their team, that's great. But why the fuck would you be passionate about a bunch of dudes living their dream when you can just do your thing, mm. right? Well, I guess that's the the point of where we're at now, right? It's like, is it a distraction? Well, what's a distraction? Like, are, are you yeah. being distracted from your pain? Are you? Is that what you're trying to get away from? Distraction from anything? What if? What if the? Um, <laughs> what if it's? Uh, like, and I'm going to circle right back to the music stuff we started talking about at the start. The monopolization of, you know, why is mainstream music <coughs> starting to get leaked into more Triple J? Mm. Because there's demand for it. But why is there demand for it? Because it's pushed out. And this is all just theory, right? But uh, this is one of the other reasons why I don't <laughs> listen to mainstream music either is mm. it's there's not, no value in it. Taylor Swift got fucking album of the year and every song – in that album was like one to 10 top 10 was from that album. The entire top 10 chart was just her album. It was sick. Like good for her, but I'm just like, what the fuck? And it's, I just feel like there's something wrong there. And I feel like now more than ever, you don't hear shit like the Led Zeppelins and the Pink Floyds and the rage against the machines mm. when they were actually raging against the machine. Mm. Now they're, they're raging for the machine, Yeah, you know, cause their political views have changed. But, you know, it's a distraction. Like people listen to music, they go, oh, it's an escape. Yeah, but what are you actually listening to, you know? I'd rather listen to something educational. It sound like the biggest old fart right now no. going fucking, you know, do this and this. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I, I love video games. They're fun. But, like, I'd rather just make money and do my thing and level my myself up. That's yeah. more interesting. Well, that's the kicker, man, because we're right now we're in this state of like, like I mentioned before, there was a kid that made like $2.7 million at one yeah. event. Back in the day, if somebody was to sit around and play video games all the time, the parents would be like, come on, do something with your life, go out, make money, all that kind of stuff. But now we're in this situation where, hey, you can make big money doing it, but if you're not good enough to make money doing it, and one way to recognize this is what you, you said before, is you're watching other people do yeah. it. Well, then you need to find something else. That's it. You know, instead of just like that cyclistic loop of just wasting time. Yeah, and, and that, those were the distractions come in. You're at work all day and you want to just get out of there. Mm. You're on the way home, you listen to the radio, you're vibing because it's something you get to do. Yeah. You get home, you turn on the internet or the Netflix or the whatever. Pornhub. Pornhub. <laughs> and you get to choose what you want. Yeah. And the choice is, is huge. Mm. And that means there's more distractions to choose from. Yeah. Whereas in reality, you're forgetting to find something that can get you out of the nine to five shithole that you hate. But you don't realize that because you want that quick dopamine hit of – I wanted, I'd rather just Pornhub or Netflix or NetHub, whatever, and or listen to music or whatever because you want to relax. Mm-hmm. You've had a big day at work. You want to relax. Yeah. Whereas the bottom line is you hate your life for the majority of the time you're awake. Mm. And the majority of the time you're awake, you're either commuting to work, you're at work, or you're cooking to stay alive. Mm-hmm. And then the only other time you have is the unwind which is really should be a mind shift of fucking get your shit sorted. Should be a wind up. Should be a wind up. Should be on the way home. You should be listening to a podcast or uh, surrounding exactly what you want, what you want to do, rather do instead. Mm. Listening to someone that's been doing it already and yeah. how they got there. Mm. 
Um, when you get home, AirPods in or whatever, whatever fucking situation you're in, Bluetooth speaker or cordless earphones or just get your phone on the fucking loudspeaker and listen to it or whatever device you have, depending on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, listen to something educational that gets you to where you'd rather be. Yeah. And Reprogram then, the neurology. Yeah. yeah. And then when you're eating the food, after you finish the food, when you're in the shower – and, you know, when you're about to go to bed, get a book mm. if you can read. If you can't read, get Audible. Fucking listen to it. Yeah. But no, people were either just like, oh, it's, I'll, I'll wait for another day. Jordan Peterson said that you need to take action now because if you're unhappy now and you don't take action, in five years you're still going to be unhappy but you're older. Mm. And I'm like, that's so true. Mm -hmm. I shared that this morning on Instagram. And it's just like, and that's the people that get distracted. And, and you think, why are they so easily distracted? Because it's just easily accessible. Yeah. And like the internet, the sports, and KO and, you know, mm. Stan, Netflix, Hulu, all that shit. Well, the, I think it's the, like we were talking about before, the monopolization of in industry. When you were talking about radio, right? Back in the day, radio was the only media outlet we had. Yeah. And then television came into it. Yeah. And then people would go to cinemas to see like a Marvel, no, I'm not saying Marvel DC shit. I'm saying like a marvelous fucking thing to like yeah. look at because it was so compelling. And then TVs got better and better and better. Yeah. And we didn't need to go to a movie anymore to see that kind of like no. experience. And then we had the internet come in. And what did that do? That On gave demand. everybody yeah. free entertainment all yeah. the time. And we are gluttons for information, whether it's yeah. like- Gluttons, point, that's it. Yeah, pointful information or pointless information. Mm. You know, like a lot of people will watch documentaries. Great. Jeffrey Dahmer's biopic, not so great. You know what I'm saying? Like- I watched that. That was interesting. It, they glorified him. Yeah. It was weird as shit. But what I'm getting at with this is like- What's, what the fuck is next? If like, if everybody is, is in this, like, I'm not saying everybody, uh, let's just say the people. The 99%. The 99%. Um, it's probably a little bit more, uh, less than that, sorry, because there are a lot of different avenues that- They're trying you, to make it. You don't get to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even like, say within like podcasting, right? Yeah. Most people will do one, do two. Oh no, it didn't go anywhere. Yeah. What, what am I? What am I to do? Yeah, it's like, I want to try everything. What are you everything. talking about? Yeah, just keep doing it Life until it works. Long. Yeah, but yeah, it's easy enough just to like program this dopamine hit that you're getting from your phone or from the television or from smoking cigarettes, vapes, and all that kind yeah. of shit. <laughs> vapes. I had a, a guy I hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy hit me up. I should. I should. I should get you involved in this instead because it's up your alley since you vape. Oh, God. A fucking vape shop asked if they would want to sponsor the podcast. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you want it? <laughs> Who is it? I don't even know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? How do you think that – Why? I mean, my, a lot of my crowd probably like vapes, unfortunately. Fuck, fucking, you know. Do what you like, but I'm not, I'm not going to promote that shit if I don't do it, if I don't like it. But I'm just like, how the fuck did you come up with that? What, the vaping? Yeah, the vape, the vape sort of like, why the fuck do you think that's a good idea for me? Like, I don't want to be sponsored by a vape shop. I want to be sponsored by uh, <coughs> Lego or something cool, something constructive, something, you know, something that wakes you up in the morning. Mm. Shout out, Hunter Moon. Hey, there you go. There's a plug. plug. Now I have plug. to put that on the YouTube. There's yeah. a sponsored segment on there. <laughs> <laughs> this is proudly brought to you by Hunter Brew. Oh shit. No. Um. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's a consumer item, right? And if people use it, it's going to sell. Like I know a guy that started um, just out of his home before, like the um, non-reusables came through, and he would sell the juice. Yeah. And like the sets, you could like buy like a chamber and like the battery and stuff. And the dude was making like seven grand a fucking day. Jesus. 
a day, dude. Uh, and like this was out of his house and there was a line at his front door. Yeah, talk about getting into something early. You yeah, know? And, you know? and like he had the monopoly and then everyone started using these um, re- not non-reusable vapes. Fucking hell. And there's, Disposable. There's, there's like, like plastic, like hard plastic. Yeah. Jesus Christ, like so much. You're going to look at uh, the waste dumps of, you know, um, tomorrow – and it's just going to be vapes and shit everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like at least cigarettes kind of decompose, kind I think of. it's like 200 years for a cigarette butt to decompose because yeah, it's but, cotton. Yeah, but, but imagine the, the throwaway fucking vapes, even worse. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Because yeah. if they used biodegradable plastic, the oil would eat the plastic and <laughs> you'd probably just get a hole in it, just <laughs> blows up in your face. Fucking hell. Did you hear about that chemical spill in Ohio? No. Look that up, Ryan. Put that in there. Let's go. Chemical spill, Ohio. Um, yes. That shit's crazy, man. Let's go, Jamie Doppelganger That's over it. here. So chemical spill um, in a, a place called, um, what's it called? Uh, Palis- Palestine. It's a weird, weird name to be in America. Palestine? <laughs> yeah, Palestine. They got yeah. their land back. Okay. Yeah, but it's so. in America. <laughs> Um, chemical spill, Ohio, Palestine. Apparently, there's a there's a few. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. Uh, just go train, Angel? train, train derailment. There's a, fr- added, a few Palestines. Added, no, 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 no. Go space and then go train derailment. What was it? Toxic. Yeah, very oh, toxic. Oh shit! Chernobyl. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that top one looks good. Like radioactive. So well, if you go down. Don't worry about the train derailment. Oh, yeah. Nope. So there's been some fucking shit happening there. I've been watching this this Fuck TikTok this. stuff. Fucking ads. Um, I think this is one of the ones you have to fucking pay for. No, block. Block. Yeah. You, you guys can you go down blocker. any further? Is this? Oh, it's fucking not free. Anyway, just read that. A train derailed and caught fire in eastern Ohio, yeah. releasing hazardous chemicals into the air, soil, and water, yeah. and raising concerns about health effects for residents. Yeah. So I researched this as well because after I saw a video about uh, it, uh, they went and did like a report about this lady and her chickens. Her chickens are all just dead. Right. Just just in their coops. Just they they don't look bothered. They're just dead. And, um, and then I saw another photo of uh, some, some pet foxes, like faces swollen and they just look like they're shriveled up and just dead. And you know the like old it. canary in the mine shaft thing? Yeah. And the canary dies, you mm. have to get the fuck out because mm-hmm. it's like there's poison. no yeah, poison, there's no, there's no oxygen mm. in the air anymore. And this is it. So I'm thinking that uh, the... Uh, fucking was it like a sodium monoxide or something? Yeah, it's it's gonna be absolute chaos over the next ten years. Over that, it's like the next Chernobyl, apparently. Oh wow! Because um, the it, they For they said to evacuate. You know, imagine like imagine like the the residents don't go anywhere and they stay because you know where else are they gonna go? Yeah, exactly. And then there's gonna be health problems down the line. Someone's gonna be fucking. Got to be responsible for that. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of uh, toxic waste when there is like a Jesus. spillage or something, it gets into the soil. Yeah, the topsoil. Yeah, and it and just then, decimates it. For and then years. the worst is there was a there was an overview photo um, from space mm. uh, from a flight. You can see the big fucking black cloud. See if you can find that, Jamie. Um, young big, Jamie. Young Jamie. <laughs> young Ryan. <laughs> So the, the cloud is like a big circular black hole looking thing on the oh planet. Oh, God. And it looks fucked. And because, um, yeah, what happens is the water is absorbed in the soil and then it uh, con- uh, condensates and evaporation and all that, you know, the cycle of water yeah. gets into the cloud and then, yeah, I don't think that's oh, it. Oh, wow. Maybe that's it. I don't know if that's it. But Damn, um, dude, that looks like it, War of the Worlds type shit. Yeah. But um, imagine that starts raining down. And then back onto the soil, on the crops, it's all ruined. Yeah. So, you know, all those like memes about Ohio over mm. the last like year, like Ohio is like a shithole. Like, yeah. are you from Ohio? You must be from Ohio, you yeah. know? Um, you know, poor, poor Cleveland, right? And just imagine that, man, like, fuck. But anyway, I don't know how, yeah, East Palest- Palestine, is that, I think that's what it's called. I think we're kind of like, uh, we're pretty safe here in Perth. 
Like we have the mining operations, but the rail system isn't as obviously. Yeah, elaborate. It, get, it gets derailed before it gets here. It gets derailed like in a nullarbor, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. But they don't really carry chemicals along the nullarbor like that. I don't think they're all on the road trains. Um, and then the mines are up north, like on Ge- like in Geraldton and shit. Mm. And there's not really many mines down here anyway. They're all the uranium and shits up there. Dude, I saw some crazy shit yesterday. So I was um, at Perth Airport. And there was a truck driver who was pulled over on mm. the side of the road. Oh, shit. He was in cuffs laying on the curb. Oof. And they had the back door of the trucks open and it was Australian Federal Police. Mm. The amount of drugs that get <laughs> hauled across Australia is ridiculous. Did you ever hear about the story of the little pink bicycle? No. There was a little pink bicycle on the back of a float, which is like a 50-ton trailer, Right. And it had a bucket or like a dozer or something on this trailer and just this bicycle. So these um, highway police officers, they pull this truck over and they're like, what's with the bicycle? And the driver's like, I don't know. It's, it came with the, with the dozer. So they're like, we want to have a look at it. Just bear with us. They unhook because it was like, like the strap was fed through the body. Yeah. They unhook it and they take the tire off and it's just packed full of cocaine. Yeah. All throughout the f- structure of the frame, all th- in the tires. They had estimated it was like five kilos of coke. What's that worth? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't even know. How much is five kilos of coke yeah, worth? We're, we're putting this, this kid to work. On what Australian. Is, what is uh, five kilos of Australian cocaine worth these well, days? I'm trying to point your attention to uh, the three and a half tons of cocaine confiscated by New Zealand. Oh, whoa. That would have been a big fucking pink bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big fuck off. Pink bicycle. That's the dozer, bro. It would have been, yeah. yeah. That's it, crazy. Was a, it was built with cocaine bricks. Yeah. I, I don't know if I need um, my search history asking how, mu- how much the value of cocaine is. No, come on. Incognito, bro. Incognito, let's go. Uh, no, just add in at the end, doing it for a... For a friend. For a friend. Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get around. Uh, yeah. The FBI are like, oh, no, no, no. This has got nothing to do with us. <laughs> Why can't I spell? A-I-N-E. Did you know that in America you can get a prescription for cocaine in powder form? Nice. If Did, you have narcolepsy, are they in making quotes. MDMA here legal now or some shit? Yeah, yeah, they're doing testing. So um, they want to do it for like PTSD and trauma and stuff. Yeah. So medical MDMA will be available under supervision. It started. It has started, my friend. When does cocaine back? Oh no! I, I, well, isn't there a place, Portugal? Portugal. Portugal has legalized every single drug. They just go, fuck it. Let's go. And how has it worked out for them? Um, I think it's deaths by drugs has decreased 83%. Um, People getting off of drugs and rehabilitation has increased by like 25%. Why do you think that is? Um, Because they're using all of the the income and revenue from the sale of these drugs to fund rehab centers and fund- Oh, the tax? Yeah. Yeah, All these uh, medical facilities for people, which is actually kind of interesting. Interesting turn of the tables. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I think that's what they're trying to do in Colorado as well. I mean, (laughs) every time someone says Colorado, I just instantly think of South Park. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So- uh, the, yeah, the drug thing is an interesting one because of the infrastructure of like all the, all the gang lords and all the drug lords mm. and all the um, like big gangs around, like especially south of America, yeah. in, um, like Colombia and shit, because there's a whole drug ring, right? Imagine if America just goes, nah, fuck it, it's legal, fucking go ham. And then the value of it just drops. What happens? Well, I, okay, this is a conspiracy theory and I love this one because it is, Awesome, bro. Um, 25% of all gang lords are informants. Wow. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of like, you know, it makes sense as to why they'd want to keep it illegal then. Because if it's funding back into mm. what's actually creating it. Like, I wonder if Pfizer and Moderna and all these other companies, yeah. do they actually have 
like fields of opium, you know, for their pain pills. Do th- where does that come from? Where does the opium from pain? Opium farms. Yeah, but like, is that illegal? Mm. Yeah. I thought most of the um, opium in the world either came from China or South America. Who knows? Maybe there's some uh, uh, untapped reserves that they're keeping quiet about. Mm. Um, and then and then the other thing as well is going into like the, the medical re- region of the world. Like how many – when was the last time you went for a doctor's appointment they just gave you drugs as a solution? Oh, literally like six months ago. <clears throat> was it like opium? <laughs> Um, it was codeine. Codeine, oof. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Can, have had it fucking not. I've had oxycontin. Oxy, oxycodone? Oxycontin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had that and literally felt, it was weird because I felt like I was calm, but it didn't get rid of the pain but it was almost like numbing to the point where I was just like, ah, oh, like on a cloud. Ah, oh, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. Yeah. Not when I had cool. ACL reconstruction. Oh, really? I was ping and A. They give you morphine and stuff? They give you morphine, but <clears throat> I had oxycodone. I think that's what it's yeah. called. And I had an extra two sleeves left over because I didn't really use it much because mm. it constipates you as well. Because mm. if you're that relaxed and you shit yourself, then you kind of fucked yourself up, you know? You have to double up with some adult nappies. But, um, yeah, the oxycodone, I was just like, oh, that's sick. But, like, every time the pain started coming in, they said, make sure as soon as you start feeling a little bit of pain, put the pill in because it takes a little while to kick in. Right. Because by the time it gets worse yeah. and then you have it, it's going to get worse until it starts kicking in and then you're in a world of hurt. Yeah. But then wait, you feel it, like – kick in you just it just it goes away like yeah it's like a blocker bang mm. but it takes a little while to kick in but then you're good for like a good four to eight hours depending on how much you take mm. um and if you shelve it or not that would make you constipated yeah but apparently shelving <laughs> i don't know why i'm talking about this but shelving it's it's uh taken in Quicker and more f- effectively. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You want to hear a story? Yeah. Okay. Shelving story? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but now we have a shelving story for you, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So I was in Bali. <laughs> okay. All right. 23 years old. I was having the time of you my life. You bumped into Chappelle Corby. Dude, this girl looked like Chappelle Corby. <laughs> I'm not even joking, right? So I was in engine room, boogieing away, having a great time. I'd taken like maybe like 10 pseudoephedrines at this time and drinking vodka Red Bulls like fucking crazy. Now, I don't know if you've been to like uh, Alley Cats in Bali. Ever been there? Yep. With the double doubles? Yep. Yep. The tray of double doubles for 15 bucks. I drank two of those trays. Then we- pres- Trays. Trays. <laughs> uh, my heart was going up like at least 180 beats per minute. Let's be honest. Uh, I go into engine room partying like crazy. Just oos, oos. By the way, no shirt, shoulder bag. Yes. <laughs> Quads or no? Quads, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Don't was, keep leg days. This was steroid days. Um, <laughs> Full <laughs> shredding for stereos. Oh, dude, I literally did that too. And then like a week <laughs> after it had a fucking heart attack. But that's another story. Um, uh, then I was in like engine room dancing away. These two girls started dancing on me. I was like, oh, stop it. She's like, come back to my villa. And I was like, okay, let's go. <clears throat> I'm not going to name this girl because it was a crazy fucking night. Um, We get back to the villa, we're partying and all that kind of stuff. Maybe three other people were there with us. Me and the two friends go into a room. We start having a bit of fun. And then she's like, do you want to get high? And I was like, we're in Bali. What what are you talking about? What what could you have? She's like, I've got Xanax, pseudoephedrine, all these, she just rattles off all of these prescription drugs that you can get in Bali very, very easily, but you shouldn't, right? And I was like, well, what are we snorting these? What's going on? Nope. She's like, have you ever shelved before? <laughs> and I was like, nah. And like, she's kissing on me and stuff. And she's like, oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe I could be your first. And I was like, 
I don't even know what you're talking about. So yeah, let's go. Let's, I was pissed as shit. <laughs> Did you not know what shelving was? Hell no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I thought we were going to fucking do lines off a shelf or something. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? It didn't make any sense to me. And she's like, sucks her finger. And she had nails, bro. She oh had my nails. God. And she puts the, I think she had like half a Xanax on the tip of her finger. It could have been a pseudo, I don't know, but I slept for days after this. <laughs> and she, like, because she'd sucked her finger, it was very easy for it to just whoop straight up. But like, she like started grabbing my ass and stuff. And I had no idea what the hell was going on. And then I, oh, oh that's not good. And she's like, just wait for it to kick in. I'm like, yeah, but your finger is inside of me. And she's like, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then her friend starts kissing on my neck. I pass out, wake up like two days later in the same villa. No, 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 no. They just (laughs) continued their life. Like nothing ever happened while a guy was like dying in the hotel room, but it was good. Jesus (laughs) Christ. Good time. (laughs) Did your ass become numb first or? That's why I couldn't leave. Like the second day my legs didn't work. Like I was seriously, I had tears coming out of my eyes because I thought I was paralyzed. Like, yeah, paralyzed from the legs down. Oh, maybe, legs down. maybe the digit, you know, scraped something that shouldn't have been scraped. Yeah, yeah. Maybe your prostate popped or something. Maybe, maybe. I can hell. It has been uncomfortable up there ever since. Really? Well, every time there's a penis in there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gay, guys. Hey, you your run. It's not gay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. <laughs> He's Look got the man, but 2023, you can't say shit like that sometimes. Um, all the yes, uh, he can, and <laughs> he's cancelled, yeah. and I'm gone. Yeah, and I'm, I'm done. Most likely going to get cancelled. Who yeah. cares? Let's just live it. While I we mean, can. I mean, we're 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 telling stories of our past. We're not like projecting shit, but you know, like the whole hashtag no homo thing. Mm. Um, it was a running joke for a long time, and everyone was like, "Oh yeah, no homo." Yeah, yeah, yeah. like there's nothing wrong with being gay. But at the same time, if you're not homosexual, you want to make sure that you say that because mm. the alternative is you post something that could be considered a bit homosexual. Yeah. And you might get DMs from dudes going, hey, let's party. Let's mm-hmm. do some shelving. But <laughs> put, hashtag, <laughs> put hashtag no homo yeah. at the end could save you a lot of time and their time. Mm. You know, just, like guys – the, the, the stuff that I say that you may think, oh, we're on here. Sorry. Yeah. No homo. Married, wife, love her. Hashtag no homo. Yeah. But. I want to pinch that ring off of my asshole. <laughs> but, um, but there are people out there who find that offensive. Yeah, obviously. But I find it's funny. Nowadays, we are in this situation where people want to. To know their, like, take pronouns, for instance. Yeah. You know, you say no homo, you're telling me what you aren't. But if you tell me your pronouns, you're telling me what you are. It's just like, wait, you you take offense at what I'm not, but you want me to say what I am. True. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's such, like, we're in such a fucking topsy-turvy world right now, (sighs) man. I know a guy that, like, once again, no names, but... There's this guy and he is non-binary and I wanted to know what does non-binary mean to you? And he goes, I don't prescribe to male or female. And I was like, what do you prescribe to? And he like, he goes, I believe male and female is a spectrum. Okay. And I I basically just said, well, you just glorified male and female as a binary and you live somewhere in the middle of that. So you actually... You're stating that there is a yeah. binary system, but you're not conforming by conforming, but in a decimal point rather than yeah. in a whole number. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. It's like maths is not a thing. Yeah. But I'm going to use maths every day to fucking get through life. Well, one interesting part about that whole like pronoun stuff now. We're just getting viewed as a couple of white dudes who are very privileged right now, by the way. Yeah, but there's some interesting points because in psychology, like a lot of – Males are dominant, right? Yeah. We're in this situation in 2023 where you have only fans and women can be the dominant person in a relationship these days. They can, well, they're not even in a relationship, even in single life. Yeah. They can have their own money, their own income, and it makes men feel like they're inferior. And where does that come from? Men. It comes from a lack of recognition. Mm. Right? Yeah. Recognizing where you are in your 
like who you are even, where you are in your life. And like, I guess making this, this, the standard of like, hey, I've got an identity that I'd like to abide by. Uh, these are my beliefs. Everyone's different, obviously. So I might as well capture who I am. Yeah, absolutely. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm really high. But Are you really high? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I got high before. I didn't know if I was going to, but I did. I remember. <laughs> I remember my first time. Hey. Here we are. Okay. It's our right, medical let's, shit, let's, son. Let's, let's, bring, let's bring it back in. <laughs> so you're talking about non-binary, binary, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, something I really haven't really discussed before, like in depth. Um, but there's this guy who was going around and uh, interviewing different spectrums or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were, he was asking them all, like, can you define what a woman is? Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes up to this someone, them, uh, in San Fran. And they were, you know, whatever. And he goes, uh, he asked the same question. Can you tell me what a woman is? And the person couldn't say what, like, I don't have the right to define what a woman is. Mm -hmm. And he's like, my favorite, my favorite follow-up question of all time on this topic. All right. Can you identify what a cat is? And the guy's like, or the person was like, I knew this was a dumb idea and just walked off. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That was like my like was the best question ever. Like, okay, well, if you don't, what? <laughs> mm. But um, I feel like we're going full circle. We're almost starting to get back around to some, like, sense. Mm. Um, like Lex. Lex uh, Friedman. Lex Friedman. And uh, what's this guy? What's the guy's name? The Jewish guy um, that's just dominating uh, at the moment. Um, Ari Shafir? No. Um, <laughs> The Jewish guy who's just completely dominating everybody uh, on uh, in, in the political debates and everything. Comedian or? Yeah, no, he's no, not a comedian. Um, he, oh, motherfucker. He's on I the follow him. He's got the little hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the little Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. Yeah, Ben. He yeah. is, he is oh, like. Oh, fuck. Here we go. He, he Am makes I able to so grab much. a drink? I've yeah. got like a dry mouth. Sorry, man. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do we have any? Oh, do you want, do you want an ale? Yes. Yes. Bottom, bottom draw, get those two ales out. Let's yeah, the boys. Go. Yeah, the boys. That this is uh, the this is the beer that collab. This is the Jack collab. Oh, this is the Jack one. Double hazy. Now so, you're high. You say it. Yeah. This is one point nine. What about it? Okay, good. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Don I probably don't want that. On there. DDH hazy IPA by Bright Tank Brewing Co. <laughs> Shout outs made in WA. Shout out, Maddie. Plug, Maddie. Good, good. Thanks. Shout out, Jack. Congratulations on your fight, big boy. Good dub. Can't wait to see oh. you in that chair, discussing fighting. Is he coming on? Maybe. Maybe. We'll see what happens? Let's get him. Let's get him. Fuck yeah. But yeah, so uh, <laughs> I didn't know you were high. I couldn't even see. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I operate high, I guess. Yeah, I'm. I'm always high on life, so I don't need that shit. I'm creative. I'm going. I'm going to therapy soon. What do you mean? Therapy. I'm gonna go see a therapist. Get some what therapy. kind of clarity? Clarity. Yeah, more clarity than um, like I'm not depressed. I'm not like sad or anything like mm. that. Um, I'm not anxious. I'm not my my marriage isn't in trouble or anything like that. I just, just feel like I need to explore myself further without shoving something up my ass. And no homo. And um, shove it. Show it. And yeah, so I've got a doctor's appointment next week to get a referral. Mm -hmm. and hopefully it doesn't take too long because the waiting list is huge now ever since. Um, COVID. Yeah. I try not to say that word because it fucking flags it on the, uh, on the YouTube and the What Spotify. can we call it? Uh, the thing that went and happened and people are starting, starting to forget about that they wasted two years of their life because of uh, an authority. Mm. That has been put in place to say, no, you can't. There's Let's so just call things. it the agenda. Yeah, the agenda. But like, <clears throat> it is, there's things that I really want to discuss, really, really want to discuss. Let's go. But the reason why I don't is this, is I've been sucked into this um, following, this- Media this, machine. This, this media machine, I'm a brand, right? Mm. And I've got an agenda myself. And my agenda is to push out as much knowledge and education that is under the radar as possible, mm. monetize what I do mm. as much as possible, escape the rat race 
and do the things that old mate that was in prison at the end of the last year with his brother, mm. you know the one? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to mention his mm-hmm. name. But not preach it as hard as he is mm. and as viciously as he is. Mm. I'm not saying that I believe in everything that he says, but I'm just saying that if you want to fucking, like I said at the start of the podcast, if you love, if you really want to get out of a shit job, you got to hustle. Yeah. And I want to help kids do that. Yeah. I want to teach people how to do that. But there's things that I know I want to say that are, that are not agreed upon by lefts and some things that are not agreed upon by rights. So you can call me central mm. in the political sort of spectrum. But uh, I really right now do not have time to debate my view against someone else, mm. like super hard. Are you talking about him? No, political views. Oh, okay, right. Um, I try to avoid politics at all costs because I just don't have time. The reason is most people that ask me these questions come in with an agenda. They're closed-minded already. Mm. I don't want to talk to them about it. Mm. Like like Ben, like Lex, like all those, like Jordan, Jordan Peterson, they have the fuck you money. Dave Chappelle has the fuck you money. Escape velocity. Exactly. Mm. They can do, they can say whatever they want. Like even Kanye fucking went on a rant. And as, as much as like, again, you know, don't shit on another whole group of people. Um, and I'm not saying I'm going to start being anti-Semitic and shit like that. Yeah, let's not be aligning ourselves. With yeah, yeah, I'm not going to say that. I'm just trying to like say that I'm really trying to fucking tell people that stuff that is not catered to society's structure, mm. as in if everybody decided to start their own business, the workers of the world will disappear what happens then? Automation will take over anyway. Yeah. So it's 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 going to happen anyway. But then what happens to those people if they don't pivot? Yeah. Right. Um, what do they do? They're out. But yeah, I'm I'm talking like I'm high right now. Um, Go for it. <laughs> 20, 2030, They say that a lot of the jobs right now that are mainstream yeah. will not exist because mm-hmm. of automation of whatever. And that happened hundreds of years ago with the Industrial Revolution. Now with AI starting to come into play, um, a lot of people are going to be out of the job if they don't pivot. Mm. And then they're just going to complain because, you know, why should they think about yeah. their future? <laughs> so that's where I want to come in and help them. But uh, without shitting on anybody, but like speaking the truth, like education system, outdated. Mm-hmm. Outdated. I agree. Um, financial systems, outdated. Somewhat. Um, China, yeah, somewhat. China and uh, Russia and a few other countries are now bonding Nukem. together. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Where we're at right now. Fucking hell. All right. Um, it doesn't make so, sense as to why we wouldn't. Yeah, so the American. I'm not saying nuclear, American Chinese. American dollar probably. is built on debt now. Mm. This is all the stuff I've just been reading about. Yeah. This is not just me something I'm saying preaching and shit, but. There's been some recent developments over in, you know, Central Asia and Europe and all those countries. They're now bonding together to apparently create their a, a new currency, some, some shit that I've read, mm. and that's going to go against the American dollar. They, it's like they're starting their own club of their trades and all this shit and then saying, America, you're not invited. Mm. That's, that's big. That's that's like that's almost war without them being any bombs. Yeah. Because like it's a war on trade. Yeah, war on trade. And then if that really gets to a, a like a critical point, we're gonna see countries that have been succeeding for the last 40, 60 years go completely rogue, completely fucking shit. Mm. And you're gonna see stuff like like have you seen the um the movie uh the where they they have one day a year to kill each the other purge. the purge mm. don't fucking start doing that yeah yeah well i think probably like this trade deficit that we're experiencing right now like take the microchips for instance from china yeah you know you couldn't get a car for two or three years because nobody had any microchips yeah i think that was probably a pushback on when donald trump pushed um huawei out of um, American yeah. uh, districts, they were selling satellites 
to America. Huawei was selling satellites to America for military use. Yeah. And then scanning their information so they know everything about their military operations. Mm. It's like, what the, f- how the, what? Yeah. How can you do like? How can you even think about like that as a strategy? Let's buy our our detection stuff <laughs> from the enemy and then hope that they don't know what we're trying to detect. What's this you're researching now, Ryan? What is this? Australian government? I don't know. It, it sounds like you want to go down the conspiracy theory. Oh yeah, let's go. Oh yeah, yeah you know. Can you zoom in on that? Uh, I cannot. No. Pinch zoom. Pinch zoom on the laptop. Hang on. There, there you go, go, big boy. All right, Australia, Australia's foreign ministry has followed the lead of the country's defense ministry, deciding to remove all Chinese-made <laughs> surveillance cameras from its facilities following reports that the technology posed a security risk. <laughs> and TikTok isn't banned yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, man. Oh, my God. I find it very strange. So I haven't been using TikTok, obviously, as much as you have. <sighs> but I've noticed that they're appointed advertisements, so they're sponsored adverts, right? Mm. They're very particular. They're very like what I want to see. But that's Facebook and Instagram as well. No, no. I feel like Facebook and Instagram are like detecting what I have seen and trying to sell me on what I have seen. Okay. But TikTok's TikTok? showing me new stuff. Like, okay, so yesterday I was thinking about, I was actually talking to one of my friends and I was talking about getting my testosterone up. Because I used to do steroids, so my testosterone has always been lower than yep. when it was n- like normal. So you're getting ads for penis pumps and shit? No. Oh, I have had them before. Same. I had the stick on, on wall one where it like spins and you can fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> on Instagram, I've been getting some fucking shit recently. Yeah. On the story, you know how you go through stories? Yeah. And then every five five stories is an ad. Mm. I've been getting like like male enhancement shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? When did I research this and when did I say any of this? Like, yeah. what the fuck? Unless my wife's telling me something that not telling me something. Well, they, they're, the say, they're saying now that they sponsor adverts to the closest people around you. So if you've talked to, <laughs> yeah, if, if your wife has talked to somebody about this or okay. something, they'll, they, yeah, they'll target ads for you. Oh, so that's because, uh, so that's because I will refer that to them. Yeah. So like, yeah, if, if, if there's a friend and you're interested in shelving, they'll be, they'll be getting me adverts and be like, hey, bro, yeah. this ad came up the other day on my end. It's right up your alley, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> right up your fucking a- anus oh, alley. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah, I've fucking walked into that one. Yeah. Not the alley. But that's an interesting marketing te- like strategy. Like, cause, cause word of mouth is stronger. So what if you target someone, somehow they figured it out through surveillance or the fucking mics are on and shit and goes, oh, Sev's friends are into X, Y, and Z. Mm. Sev doesn't give a fuck, but Sev hangs out with them all the time. Let's send him the ads because that's all they talk about to him. And then he can feel good about himself recommending that shit to them. Yeah. That's fucking genius. Mm. You know, do you reckon that's real? Do you reckon that's a thing? Yeah. Yeah? Probably. Yeah. Two friends talking to each other. One has viewed a product and likes the product, refers it to his friend. It, the friend shows interest in that product. And then yeah. and then they're like, okay, we've fundamentally just made a sale because he's now yeah. thinking about this. But um, I mean, the other way is like Facebook, right? My, my wife, she's on Marketplace every two seconds looking at furniture and shit. I wouldn't be surprised if all my ads started being leather chairs and Throw, throw rugs and mm. all this shit, picnic baskets and stuff, whatever they're into. And I'm like, oh, that's something Sabine would like. I might buy that for her. Yeah. I wouldn't never because I want to confirm that she'd like it so I don't waste my time. She'd love anything. She loves gifts. She loves free shit. Um, but it's such an interesting way to market now. I, I do it with my clients. So I do it with um, organic, organic approach and go – Right, we're going to go hard with the whatever marketing strategy it is. We're going to go broad and we're going to get everybody in liking the channel, whether they're a target audience or not. Why? Because if they're not, they're going to know someone that is. Mm. So I'm kind of doing it organically. Mm. But this is an interesting way to kind of come in and, and do it a sneaky word of mouth kind of let's pitch to them that they'll follow that up to someone else. Yeah. 
I'd love to see that proven, like proven for the fact. That'd be sick. That'd be insanely, I don't know. It's not evil, but it's clever. It, it does have a slight male- malevolence to it. Yeah. It's like Maccas, right? Maccas have um, two things that most others don't have. Hungry Jack's adopted it. One is the toy and the Happy Meal. Mm. They want the toy. They don't give a fuck about the food, but the food's there. It's lunch, it's dinner, no worries. Mm. They also have the playgrounds. You go in there, you sit down. I don't remember the last time I sat down in a restaurant unless it was 2 a.m. And <laughs> at Macca's. And like what? You, you take your family there. The kids go off and fucking run amok in the, in the playground. Mm. And you're just like, oh, sweet. I get to relax a little bit. You know? Yeah, enjoy this poison that I'm about to yeah. shove into my throat. Yeah. <laughs> As he's drinking IPA. Hey, hey. It's not poison. It's some it's some good quality. It's actually really nice. Yeast, hops, barley, wheat, oats, and water. <laughs> that's it. That's actually pretty good. It's a good breakfast. That's a that's a quality breakfast. Yeah. It's better than Sultana brand. Yeah. Anything's <laughs> oh actually Sultana brand is like one of my all time favorites. Yeah, it was good. Uh, Sult- Favorite cereal, go. Sultana brand. So, really? Yeah, okay. straight up. Sultana brand. He's that's, laughing because he's got Russian random fucking subjects. <laughs> Nutrigrain was a top tier one for ages. Nutrigrain. Until I learned that it is completely the worst one to have. Yeah, it's sugar. Full of sugar. Yeah. Fruit Loops. It was worse than Fruit Loops. Mm. I love Fruit Loops. Uh, Kellogg's Crunchy Nut. That, that was fucking yeah. fire. Yeah. And you want to you like sog it up a little bit. But not too soggy because you still want that crunch. Just that little midway point. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> That's right. Alcohol poisoning is a serious and sometimes deadly consequence of drinking. Love but a great breakfast. In a short period of time. Um, Stay safe, children. Can you Google this? Are most breakfast cereals freeze-dried? Have, have you seen all these freeze-dried- How high are you? Holy shit. <laughs> have you seen all these freeze-dried uh, videos on TikTok where people just take like sugary things, freeze-dry them, and just like do like ASMR videos with it? I was thinking like, why are rice bubbles so crispy and light? Why are like Fruit Loops so crispy and light? You know what I'm saying? It could be freeze-dried. Yeah. He just Googled freeze-dried cereal. He didn't ask the question. It's all of them, see? Are all cereals freeze-dried <laughs> cereals? Hang on, let me... Let me let man me doesn't know how to Google. One sec. That's okay. I need the keyboard. <laughs> question. Freeze-dried cereal, question mark. <laughs> just add water. Just make sure, make sure it's actually... Uh, uh, you put the, uh, the channel on your Googling search so my followers can fucking laugh at your shit Google <laughs> technique. Just get a chat GPT <laughs> and ask it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I'm very self-conscious of my inability to spell anything like correctly. And or Google anything. Yeah, that's okay. Well, we'll you play do a game. Song. We'll play a game. Um, let's see oh, exactly. how quickly can you Google uh, when Kanye first became famous? Become famous. There you go. <laughs> you were streamlined with that, 2000s. Not bad. Okay, now we're on a roll. Now go and say, are, uh, cereals fr- are all cereals freeze-dried? Question mark. There we go. It's a learning moment for Ryan. I'm trying to switch cameras here for, for you as well. What foods what do not... Fuck? Re- what the fuck? Best ways to store and use cereal dried. Anyway, going back to this yeah, uh, cereal chat. Um, <laughs> I Oh, wheat bix was shit. You had to put banana or sugar on them. Um, but yeah, oh, Cocoa Pops, like chocolate ones. Oh, back in the day, bro. Right? Drink little, the little milk. crackle. Yeah. Um, but I really wish that I just had eggs on toast. Yeah. And I had I had the tea and the the milk, the white milk, the mm. white tea. It was good, Russian style. Were you going like at any point? Were you going to do the carnivore diet? Like when? Like recently. when I was a kid? No, recently. I try to I try to do it as much as possible. Like yeah. today, we went and had a meeting with Royale Burgers, mm. and um, Ken Ken, one of the owners, came out and said, oh, "What would you guys like? Did you order any food?" I was like, "Ah, oh, no." Nah. He's like, "What about chicken wings?" 
That's the easy one. That's your thing. I got chicken wings at home. I need to eat them because bully butcher plug. And, and I'm like, I don't really feel like a burger because, you know, buns. And yeah, he came up with some seared chicken and it was a bit of salad and a bit of corn there as yeah. well, but that still counts as carnival. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm always conscious. I don't eat chips. I try to avoid yeah. rice. Good move. Um, Anything deep fried really? Yeah, soy, uh, no, seed oils. Most of that shit is fried in seed oils. Yeah. So even if you think you're carnivore, mm. you're having a fried piece of fucking chicken. Yeah. Seed oils are fucking the death. That's worse than carbs. Yeah, the um, digestive inflammation that you get from seed oils is systemic through the rest of it your doesn't, body. It doesn't break, your, break down in your body either. No, yeah. it, it, it does some bad, bad things yeah. like oxalative pathways and stuff like it literally even swelling of the brain yeah did you know that yeah neurological swelling which is fucking strange bro so you're on carnival diet right now not right now oh yeah so Did you have a cheat day w- yeah yeah right What'd you now. have the, the last if i'm being honest and i like to be honest people um the last week i've been fucking off hard because i did 31 days on yeah and i was thinking well if i take seven days off and then jump back on, let's go. But it was supposed to be one day, and that became a weekend. That's how it starts. And now it's we're coming up to um, tomorrow, which is the seventh so day. So what f- sort of food are you having now? Anything I want. I don't give a shit. Fair enough. I won't eat deep fried. Um, won't eat noodles and stuff like that. I'm just aware of like soy-based stuff because I'm kind of like – testosterone aware right now so i don't want anything like secreting more estrogen yeah. or like like decimating my testosterone levels mm. like i'll take tongat ali and stuff every day which increases your testosterone it's all naturally. about testosterone especially when you have babies because like they i've been reading this primal eating book yeah and shout out liver king you piece of shit Sorry. yeah um so this primal book was written was published early 2000s mm. so i'm going to directly extract what I read from there. So fuck you if you want to cancel me. Let's go. Here no, we go. no, don't cancel him, but let's Here go. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so there's a passage in there that says that um, a, a bad gut uh, imbalance Flora. in the gut, in the uh, and, uh, like the, the microbiome, the, the, you know, the little gut health. Poor gut health is directly related to retardation. It actually said that in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. And I look at these things and you, you see these healthy people who have children who are not so blessed genetically. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say in my world now. And you're thinking, what the fuck? But the book, like, I've, I've seen some shit, right? Mm. And I've tested some shit. When I was a personal trainer... I was uh, – every Thursday, I would train these two people. One had autism, severe autism, like the mind of a five-year-old maybe, and he would go absolutely off. Like he would like be triggered and just have these episodes, right? Mm. And I would ask his carers, what did he have to eat over the last few days? Like, oh, traditionally we go get Subway. And I'm like, okay, Subway's not that bad. But wait, wait yes, bread – what else does he have? Oh, he has chocolate and all this shit. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist, but are we able to take away, because he has chips and fucking all this shit. Can we take that away for a week? And I'd love to see the difference. And they committed to it. Mm. Next week they came back to me and said, he has had the least amount of breakout episodes they've ever had. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, fuck a duck. I was like, that's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Friend of mine, she's ca- ca- caring for this guy who has MS, mm-hmm. right? 38-year-old, completely cooked, in bed, completely ridden, cannot move. Like 38, man. And the only way he can commun- communicate is like eye movement. At 38, your life's over. Yeah, that's real rough. She rough started shit. to, she, she was caring for him. She started to give him some more organic stuff. Mm-hmm. Like not not like completely like vegan or something vegan yeah. shit, but like organic, non bullshit shit. He started to feel some movement. He started to do like hand movements and shit. 
And I started. Jesus. I'm just like observing all these things. And I'm like, what happened to the medical industry? What happens in the medical industry right now? Okay, you've got all these doctors who have got medical, they're medical professionals. And they, they go to university, they go to medical school to learn so many different things for six, seven years. How often is that data updated? Mm. And what if that data is completely reversed or, or co- something makes the last 40 years a contradiction? Who's in the wrong? So many lawsuits potentially, so many angry people. Mm. But bottom line is we still need to do it because we need to evolve. Otherwise, we're just going fucking nowhere. Yeah. So what if we came in and, and started to really pay attention to our gut health and really go, right, these leaky guts, these fucking poor, poor anti-testosterone things, when we're about to do some reproduction, re- reproduction mm. you know, conceive a baby, that could be the pinnacle of, of the difference, like- you know? Have you seen the um, the World Health Organization's latest chart of what foods are recommended? Is that the health pyramid? Yeah. Yeah, and how like all the fucking good shit apparently is all just bread and rice and pasta and shit? Yeah, well, they said that a bowl of Captain Crunch cereal, which is like yeah, yeah, a yeah. high sugar cereal, is now better for you than eggs, yeah, boiled eggs and beef mints. Yeah, there it is. Which is like, how can, that's industry for you though, right? Yeah, put that up on there. The Asian, okay, Asian diet pyramid. Okay, go to the Asian one. Go down a little bit. So you've got your whole grains. Now, notice how it says whole grains. This is science direct. Yeah, this is a bit different, but just go down to the the Asian pyramid. Yeah, whole Um, grains is considered oils as well, which is disgusting. So the, the, the thing is with whole grains, right? With flour, it's not whole grain. It's extract. Extracted extract, yeah. out of the grain, mm. so that means you don't get the whole grain that nature intended you. Yeah, to you have. don't get the germ and so stuff. So that's why whole grain is a lot better for you yeah. because there are balances within the grain. Yeah. So that's why that diet successful. There's but actually then, a really good replacement for just regular flour. It's called spelt flour. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. has the germ yeah. in it and stuff. Yeah. But if, if the, the at the end of that pyramid, the top was meat. Which is bullshit. It should That's be. That's disgusting. I can yeah. tell you now that after a month of the carnivore diet straight, I didn't cheat once. Mm. Uh, actually, I lie. I had one piece of fruit, but that's not, that's, not out that's of That's still content. considered yeah, ca- sti- a carnivore. Yeah, but I wanted to like do the whole month just meat to see what it You wanted do. to be fucking um, a Viking carnivore diet where there's yeah. no trees and shit. Nothing. You just have to survive on meat, salt, and blubber. Well, I wanted to know that my discipline was higher than Joe Rogan's. No. And he, yeah, and he he um, fucked up three times. He had sushi, bread, and something else. But I had one piece of fruit, so. Do you like ice baths? <laughs> I love them. And DMT? Oh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, uh, nice. have you done DMT before? No, I'm, I'm interested. It's just a matter of uh, when and where, how, and who I'm with. Yeah, of course. Set and setting's massive. Yeah. Um, oh, Oscar, something I really... I'm interested in as well. Done any psilocybin mushrooms or anything? No, I've had a chance to do mushrooms, but again, it wasn't like I wasn't in the mood. Um, and it's like, meh, mm. see what happens. Um, but again, like talking about psychedelics and all these alternative things um, and like natural drugs, right? You got to make sure you're with the right people that know what they're doing. You're not doing it in a dark alley spontaneously in a wrong mindset because mm-hmm. that's when you can trip bad and fuck up your life. Big time. So that's like the, you know, disclaimer. And I haven't need to I haven't needed to do it. Um, I'm very interested in the the DMT stuff, the, the way that they explain things, your out of body experiences and you see a whole universe and different and shit. Yeah, I've done um, it like four times now. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's a wild experience. Like I thought I was, I had an alternative life for six months. For, and how long was your actual trip? 15 minutes. What were you doing for six months in your head? Going to work, coming home, seeing the wife and kids. You had a wife and kids? Wife, kids, friends, went to the pub every Friday. Did you get fat? Did you, did you live it up? No, I was living a really, really good life. Fucking For hell. six months. So and how did... How I came back, yeah. I, I was um, standing on a beach watching my kids tr- learn to surf and then came back. It's like when you go into the trip, you feel like this pressure just pushing down like 
on your scalp. So like you take three, okay, so this is where it gets weird because a lot of people are like, Ugh, how you smoke it is a little bit kind of disgusting. You have to do it through like a crack pipe, like a meth pipe. Um, and that's how you kind of get the, the long hits. So you, you take one big hit and you hold your breath, exhale, take another hit, and everything starts going woof, 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 just waving in and out. And then if you can manage, because you want to be able to break through, you take one more hit, just and just hold it. And then you just get this pressure on your forehead and like in your crown of your head and it's just pulling down and you feel like physicality is ripped away from you and you just shot through the universe. And then you just wake up and there's, it's very trippy, like, nothing you'd ever you can't describe it like there's it's just like um geometric patterns and like fragments and that's fucking it's sick. just crazy bro so um in those six months that mm. you spent do you have vivid memories of things that happen in those six months now when i'm dreaming when you're dreaming mm. wow do you remember your kids names no fuck i know no terrible father wasn't my children. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of have like this um, theory that it's not so much we go somewhere else, but it's a perception change. Like you've heard of the, um, the different dimensional, like there's an infinite amount of sevs in the universe mm. and they're all doing something a little bit different. Yeah. You know, like in another universe, you'd be sitting here and I'd be sitting there. Yeah. That kind of shit. I feel like it's almost like, a picture through into in somebody else's eyes in another universe somewhere else. Oh yeah. And then you get to kind of like come back to it to where you are. It's amazing how someone discovered this drug and, and learned how to, you know, have you heard about what they're doing with it? No, they're feeding it on an IV drip. Oh shit. Yeah. And they're taking like one and a half hours in there and they're mapping out the brain activity? No, they're mapping out like the actual place that you go because so many people have the same experience. Oh, wow. That they're mapping out like like where everything is. No shit. Yeah, it's wild, dude. Fucking hell. Yeah. What, what's going on with like the use of um, drugs for therapies these days? Like we were talking about before with the MDMA and stuff. Most of the time, MDMA will fix you. It's set and setting, as you were saying just before. It's if... I'm not around the right people, i.e. club goers. Yeah. In the wrong setting, i.e. at a club. If you're taking MDMA, drinking, having a great time, that's fine. You do that. But if don't expect it to be therapeutic. Yeah. If you're also putting like poison, hey, in your body and like trying to be social. Yeah, and, and that's that why, oh, Oscar, you need to have 10 days of um, complete – like abstinence. clean abstinence, no alcohol, mm. um, some other shit that I don't remember. Just crazy, man. Mm. Fucking crazy. Far out. We've been, oh, fuck, how's it been over an hour already? Jesus. Should we wrap this shit up? No, we can oh, keep okay. going. What's, what, <laughs> what's the battery life at? <laughs> yeah, it's not good, eh? It's not good? Nah, it's not good. What are we looking at? Nah, you just got under 10%. Oh, just under 10? All right, well, let's, let's wrap it up and- uh, we can do a part two. I think the audience is probably already going, fucking talk more shit. This is great. <laughs> um, we've got some good clippables in that anyway. Yeah. Especially the shelving story. I can't wait to put that up. Welcome yeah. to two guys, two white guys on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to two white guys on a podcast. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm, I'm really, really proud of like this setup and you. everything that you've, everything that you've done so far. Thank you. For, Thank you. Yeah. You too, bro. No, this is really cool. This is really dope. Thanks. It's it's different. Yes. I like it. It's good. Yeah. Nobody yeah, else is doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Hopefully I can um, bring some people in and, and utilize the studio for themselves as well so I can monetize the or subsidize the rent. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, – It's an investment though, right? Yeah. 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 100%. Um, what's your kind of goal for the next – for the rest of the year? What's your, what's your biggest achievement that you want to – Push through. Push through. Um, there's a, quite a number of them. Um, I want to get to 100 episodes, and that's we're only 40 off. Oh, easy dubs. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Um, 
So last year I did 52 episodes. I averaged one a week. Um, and, you know, it's good. I'm glad I did that. But I think now it's, it's, it's time for team building, getting everything ready yep. to bang it up. And what you told me, get on the reels yeah. and TikToks. Yeah, not just reactions. Yeah. I like that shit though. Yeah, it's good. But is it long-term sustainable? Hell no. Uh, no. I had one video I put up on my other channel on TikTok that had 20 million views and got me like 15,000 followers. Mm. Wrong audience. Really? Yeah. So they say that viral videos are not actually the best thing that can happen to you. Mm. The right videos that find the right people in the algorithm are the best thing that can happen to you. I'd rather have a thousand fans that will want to know more and more and more because those thousand fans are like, that's a lot of people mm. than a million randoms who followed me for one aspect of my interest. Mm. I want someone that follows me for everything. Yeah. Someone comes up to me for a photo, Sev, love your fucking this and this and this. That's the goal. But um, yeah, keen to see how you, uh, when you cracked your hundred, um, I'm keen for a long episode with you, um, yeah, come on. Whatever we do on that, let's smoke some cigars. Yes, get fucked and, up, and uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I'll have to do it on a uh, Friday, so I don't have any obligations on the Saturday. We'll go out after it. Yeah, legit. Sounds good. We sh- we got to actually do that poker thing too. Yeah, yeah. We'll play a game of poker on the on a podcast. <laughs> We'll get, we'll get someone else on, get like email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get email and Lockie and stuff. Yeah. Get yeah, Lockie will be keen. <laughs> yeah, he'll be keen. But yeah, um, if you have any advice for anybody doing, wanting to do what they love, what would it be? Good question. Don't judge yourself too much. If you're in a situation right now and you think maybe I could do something else, don't consider the things that you've done is a waste of time because the skills that you learn right now could be implemented in the future. Yes, sir. And uh, don't get into debt learning something that you're not sure about. I'm talking about uni. That's a good point. Like, yeah, you can learn what not to do, but why the fuck would you invest tens of thousands of dollars to figure that out? Mm. You can do that well before uni. Yeah. Hit up chat GPT instead. Let's go. Good, thanks. Universities, many of them, out of business. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Find uh, Jacob and shit in the link in the description. Peace. See you, See you later. Uh-